Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everyone. Thanks for joining in on this beautiful sunny day. Today, we're going to take you for a drive in this Jaguar, which actually happens to be equipped with a paddle shifting ZF automatic transmission. But from the driver's seat, a lot of the paddle shift systems operate very much the same. Fundamentally, in the back, underneath the hood, often they're quite different because there's automatic transmissions, but there's also dual clutch transmissions, as you'll find in modern day Lamborghinis, you'll find in F1 Ferraris, you'll find in McLarens. You'll find them in a lot of different cars, even in pedestrian vehicles like Volkswagens and Audis as well. But fundamentally, from the driver's seat, they do very much operate the same. So let's go for a little ride and I'll explain to you how to drive these cars for maximum performance and how to drive these cars for maximum fuel economy. Let's get into it now. Okay, so first of all, let's point out that most of these cars have these paddle shifters. And of course, some of them go with the steering wheel and other ones stay on the stock like you'll find sometimes in some of the Italian supercars. Regardless, fundamentally, it still works the same way. Right hand side, up, up, up gears, down, down, down on the left hand side. So that's pretty stra straightforward. Now, if you want to drive for performance, the thing you got to remember is you want to keep the RPMs up because the higher the revs, the more horsepower you're getting out of the engine. The lower the revs, you'll get more torque, but you're basically losing performance in terms of acceleration. So here we go, we'll accelerate. We're in first gear. And I'll just show you to get more power. So there you have it. So basically, to get the maximum performance, you're accelerating and you're letting the revs go a little higher. Now, if you want to get better fuel economy, see we're on the highway now. As you can see, we're on the highway. So what that means, you probably want to shift up. And you know, at 2,000 RPM for highway driving, that's okay for if you want to do a little passing, you want to use you know, a couple thousand RPM. But now we're on the highway, see, now automatically it shifts down because the transmission electronics knows better. So you can also do that yourself. So if, say you wanna go for a pass, now you're at this rev, pull a down gear, see it down shifts, and now what you can do is accelerate, and you can upshift once you're past that slow traffic, upshift again. Now I'm in seventh gear. Of course, you can see we're at 1500 RPM. That's where you wanna be for economy. Shift up one more and it drops it. Now we're getting maximum economy. Say you wanna go for a pass again, pull the lever one time. Is that enough revs? Not so much for real acceleration. How about one more? Maybe one more. See now, you keep pulling on the downhill gear and of course now it gets the revs higher. When you pull it down, you downshift, that means the RPM comes up. When the RPM comes up, you develop more horsepower from the engine. So often coming out of corners, you always pretty much wanna have your revs up a little bit. You don't wanna be coming out of a corner with revs like this. So you wanna downshift, we're going into a corner, we signal, of course, downshift again, we're in second gear, now we're at 3,000 3, RPM. That's a good place in terms of revs to come out of a corner, nice and hot so that you have enough acceleration to clear an intersection or even just to get out of the hole really quickly. So we round the corner and now we have enough revs and there you go. So now we're cruising again. So now for economy, you basically, again, as I say, pull a gear, 2000 RPM, maybe not enough. Let's try one more. See, now we're at a place 1500 RPM, sometimes cruising at 1200 RPM, even in some cases on a highway, if you're coasting steady at 60 miles an hour, even 1000 RPM or 1200 is a good place to be for maximum economy. Now, of course, we go over here. You also have this option. Now you can manually shift, in this case, See, the revs come up. Now you can pull the gear, it says minus plus. Most of these transmissions have this capability. So I'm gonna pull up, pull back to actually shift up. Watch, as I pull this, now the RPMs drop. I'm shifting up gears, one more. Okay, now we wanna go for acceleration. We definitely wanna push it forward and try it again. See, and now the revs come up, it's ready because the gears are lower, the RPM comes up. Again, with the lower revs, less power, but more economy, and again, as I say, if you wanna accelerate, you wanna downshift, go there, and now you got more power, just like that. So that's that, you can throw that back in auto mode. The beauty is with these sort of systems, with the dual clutches or the ZFs that are shiftable, like you see here on the paddles, it gives you that capability. Now you can throw it in automatic mode, you don't even have to worry about it. The car pretty much takes care of it. It knows what the smartest moves are in terms of shifting up or down for maximum economy. Now, there are a lot of other electronics behind these systems that when you pull, in this case, a lot of cars have sport mode. This car here has what they call dynamic mode. Pull that back, 
And now, of course it does other things. This is a Jaguar, you get red gauges, you get crazy exhaust sounds, but it also gets the transmission into a mode where it's more aggressive. It'll hold gears at a higher RPM before shifting up when it's in auto mode, or it'll just be more abrupt when you're pulling the gears. It'll be a little quicker shifting, it'll be more aggressive. The same rules apply. You wanna go for performance, you definitely wanna downshift. See, we're at 2200 RPM, let's try one more. See, there you go, that, your performance, but now you're like, oh, I just wanna cruise and I wanna just take it easy. Maximum economy, remember, pull the higher gears. So you wanna up a shift and now you're cruising at about 12, 1300 RPM. Again, maximum fuel economy. You won't get the big power. Try to accelerate, you'll notice it kind of slugs. So when the same thing generally applies as a rule for manual transmissions, now these double clutches and ZFs that are shiftable simulate that. It's just the transmission does all the thinking for you. You don't need that left foot over there. If you have a problem with your left foot or you're just bored or you just don't like shifting a manual transmission, these cars can do all that for you. You don't have to deal with that left foot. But these give you, again, as I said, the flexibility of driving it in auto mode and it makes it nice and easy and comfortable for busy traffic. So another little trick is the engine braking factor. So if you're driving along at a low RPM like this and you wanna start slowing down, you're coming up to a stop sign, you can actually use downshift, downshift, and it'll help slow down the car. See, just like that, that actually slows down the car. And it, it'll save your brakes a little bit. I wouldn't downshift too aggressively. I mean, that does take a toll somewhere if you're doing that too, too overzealously, but see, we're in fifth gear at low RPM. We can downshift. And that actually slows us down. Now you come up to a stop. This is the other thing I have to point out. You're coming up to a stop. I'm stopped, either that or a red light or what have you. This is an automatic transmission. Very important to know what kind of car you're driving. This car has an automatic, so it can be driven as an automatic. I can come to a stop. The car automatically throws itself in idle in basically neutral, it does what a normal automatic transmission will do and you don't have to worry about any of this other stuff. See, you, it'll take care of itself. Now, if you're driving a modern PDK or a dual clutch transmission or F1 system of some sort, they will also do this. You basically pull up, they will sit there and they will idle and they'll be fine. However, if you're driving some of the older cars, the older Ferrari 360s, 430s, if you're driving a Lamborghini Gallardo, or you're driving maybe a BMW E60 M5, or some of those older versions where they had a single automated clutch system, what you have is a scenario where you have to throw the car in neutral. If you do not throw the car in neutral and you leave it in auto or you leave it in a gear and it might say gear one, what you're going to do is essentially burn out the clutch really, really fast. With the BMW M5, you basically throw this into neutral. With the Ferraris and the Lambos, generally often like the Lamborghini, you would pull both levers at the same time, and then that, bang, it pops it into neutral and you'll no longer see a gear like one or two, or drive, you'll automatically basically see neutral. And that's ultimately where you wanna rest these vehicles, at a stoplight, because two minutes in gear, in a Lamborghini Gallardo is enough for 10,000 kilometers of wear and tear on a clutch in the right circumstances. It's just not good. So you just gotta know what type of car you've got. Modern day dual clutch, you're okay like this, just parking it, just pulling up in gear, you're fine. One of the older systems, you should find out what you're driving. Again, you wanna throw that in neutral. Automatics like the ZFs or any of the other automatic transmissions, not a problem. You can basically just leave them as is. It'll pull up, whether it's in park, I can throw that into gear. We're okay in drive. Uh, we can switch that over to sport mode. It can sit in this mode. You can also put it into reverse and it's okay there too. We can sit here for a minute or so. Not generally going to do a lot of damage to these cars. Thanks a lot everybody. Thanks for joining in. Much appreciated. Please, if you could hit that subscribe button down there to the right hand side, as well as don't forget to hit the notifications bell right next to that. It's going to let you know when the next great video is out. And over there, a link to one of my most popular videos of all time, the BMW key fob video. I hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye.